Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ann Scarberry. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you a simple way to set up the kids table for your 4th of July barbecue or picnic. I love a designated table just for kids. It makes the child feel special that I thought about them before they came. Um, I give them act an activity like coloring or a craft, um, something not very messy, but something to occupy them while their parents are busy interacting with other family members. I'm busy, I'm hosting, so this is just an easy, unspoken uh, space that a parent could walk in and park their kid at this table. Their snacks are already there, their drinks are already there, and there's something for them to do. I try to be a little bit mindful about offering a bunch of sugar at the kids' table. I realize not every parent appreciates seeing a bunch of candy and snacks on their kids' table. So I try to be mindful, but my goal here is to keep the mess at a minimum and to keep things contained in packaging. So I grabbed, uh, I guess, uh, the lesser of all the evils on the shelves. I love macaroni and cheese. Us adults love the macaroni and cheese and most kids like it. So um, I like to make a big batch of it. I offer it to the kids, but I package it up so it's easy for them to grab and it's easy to hold warm. So how I make it, I always um, shred my own cheese. It's a lot creamier that way. I never buy pre-shredded cheese, almost never because um, it's just not, not as good, it's dried out. And so I like freshly shredded cheeses. And I start with a roux, which is two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of flour, equal parts. Mix that together and let it develop a nice golden brown color, kind of cook that flour off. Then I added, which I didn't have my camera rolling, I added four cups of milk to that and then I start adding my cheese and whisk it all in and let it get good and melty. And I made a huge mess. I had a friend over and we were talking and she was trying to help me with the camera work and we were just uh, not being mindful of making this huge mess here. I will put the recipe in the description, but I ended up using two blocks of Colby Jack and one block of fresh Parmesan and it blended, once this got all melted in, it turned into a velvety cheese sauce. My goodness, it was so good. And I added that one pound of cooked macaroni noodles to it. Now, there's different thoughts on the perfect macaroni and cheese. I, I guess I like to slurp my macaroni and cheese. I do not like to bake it. I don't understand why you spend all this effort trying to get a good creamy cheese sauce and then throw it in an oven to dry it all out. I, I don't like that crunchy top. I don't like the breadcrumbs on top. I like it just like this out of that pan. That's perfection right there. That's as close to like a Stouffer's frozen mac and cheese you can get. That is perfect right here. I don't know why you would want to dry this out. And I realize um, this might not be the perfect mac and cheese for some people, but to me, this is delicious. I did add some spices to it, and I'll put that again in the, in the recipe in the description. I'll give it to you. But I love these little pans. I got them on Amazon, and I'll give you the link for these. They're just these little tiny portions. They're single serving size of aluminum pans. And I just portioned out what I think um, a child might enjoy. And so I filled these up, put the lids on them, and they can store in the fridge up until the party. I could do this two days in advance in the fridge. You could also freeze this right here, put the lids on and then put them in a, a plastic bag for the freezer. But I love it like this. It's nice and easy, keeps it contained, and um, it's ready to go for my party. Again, I can do this up to two days in advance and it's perfect. The day of my barbecue, I can just take them out of the fridge and put it in the oven to heat it through and we're good to go. I love to display little bags of chips in a cute way. Sometimes I use a giant bowl. To this time I thought this cute picnic basket was perfect. So 
I just arranged them nicely and set it on the table with everything else. For a different spin on pigs in a blanket, I just made up some cubes of Colby Jack cheese and I took some little Smokies, um, like hot dogs, and I took some Parker House rolls uh, from the freezer section and I set them in a 9 by 13 pan and let them thaw out. Then I just flattened them with my hands, put in a little smoky and a block of that cheese and I just pinched the seams together, rolled it back into a little ball and repeated it until I had enough little portions for the kids that were coming. I covered them with a towel and let the dough rest for about 20 minutes and then I baked it according to the package directions that was on the rolls. Then when they came out, I brushed them with a little bit of butter and served them warm. Actually, some ate them at room temperature and they were delicious. I got this idea from my sister-in-law who lives across the street. She always has a piece of paper, like a giant piece of paper on her kitchen table with a giant tower of markers. So every time someone comes over, they sit at the table and they color. It doesn't matter the age, we just always end up coloring or drawing. So I um, printed this up from my iPad. I just designed a 4th of July picture and set this out on the table and we started coloring immediately. I don't know why, this is just so therapeutic to just sit there and visit and just kind of color with a marker. I'll give you the link in the description for this um, image. You just um, need to download it to your phone or your computer and then email it to a UPS store or an Office Max, Office Depot, Staples. They will print it out. They print. It's called an engineering print and it prints into a 24 by 36 size and you actually get two of them for $7. For this next activity, I thought it was gonna be a home run and I'm so disappointed that it didn't work out better, but I'll share it with you anyways. You might have a better idea of how to do this, but I took a tin can and filled it with water and froze it. So I had ice in here. Okay, then I put a star and taped that around the can and I don't know if you ever did this in school. We did this in art class at school. We did tin punch and you just take a nail and a hammer and you trace any image, just kind of just go around and punch a hole through an image. Well, this was hard um, because it was circular, it's wet and um, it's moving around. It was kind of difficult. So I would say this is for an older crowd. I even struggled with it. I was thinking it's the 4th of July, you're gonna wanna have a little lantern to carry around um, in the dark when you're outside. So it turned out cute, um, maybe not the best child-friendly craft. Maybe you could do paper and those battery-operated little lights. Maybe they could make a little lantern with a hole punch and paper. But my little guy enjoyed it. He liked playing around with it, but um, probably not a child craft. The final activity that I'll share with you today is this 4th of July bingo set. I got this, oh my goodness, probably 10 years ago at Target at the dollar spot, and we love it. I set it out every year, and um, someone normally puts a game together, and we play bingo. Now, I will put a link to one just like it um, in the description if you want to grab one. I think that's everything that I'll include in this video. I hope you found something that maybe you will use in your upcoming picnics and barbecues 
We are so excited for summer over here. We will see you soon with more ideas and more recipes.